Oh god. 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 She's hot. Hey, Bosco. Hey, buddy. What you doing? Hey, Cook. You want to go outside? You want to go outside? Well, I know you want to go outside. Why am I even asking that? Go ahead. Hey, what's up, guys? Today is the day for the big oil change. We're going to change the oil in this 2014 Thor Motor Coach Palazzo sitting on a Freightliner chassis with a Cummins ISB 6.7. What are we doing? Dogs think they're going camping or something. But first, we got to move some stuff. Got to move Big Red over here. Big Red is always in my way. So we're going to move Big Red. Let's get Big Red out of the way. Big Red is locked. That's a good thing. Let's jump up here in Big Red and move Big Red. Uh, uh, I love these. <laughs> this one, I think this was Dot Ram's first attempt at, make, at making a uh, key fob. <laughs> That's so funny. All right, y'all listen to this. Y'all ready? Listen, listen. Here we go, listen. If, if that's not some yee yee stuff, I don't know what is. <laughs> I love it. This is my son's truck, by the way. And uh, we, looked up, we looked up and found this truck for him at a local dealership. And uh, he absolutely loves his truck. It's a 2000, this is a 2014 uh, Ram 1500. Um, it's got 80, 86,000 miles on it. And uh, I'm not usually the one to go buy a uh, used pickup truck but we we most certainly lugged up on this one so um previous owner kept this thing immaculate and uh, he put a lift kit on it and uh brain thing had brand new tires on it had a six inch uh rough country lift kit on it and uh but the truck was in immaculate shape i mean it literally looked like it had never uh been off road i mean it you know it's probably just a mall crawler but uh, my son, he loves his truck. He actually hates it when I have to get anything and move it around the yard. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna get this thing out of the way here. He done he's done pushed in the mirror over there because he thought I was gonna hit it with the motor home and I can't see any way out that one. But hey, we'll make it work with this one right here. I got one mirror to work with. This ain't my first rodeo with one mirror. Yeah, a little 
rev up. That was, that, that was a nice cold start, by the way. I didn't even mention anything about a cold start. But was... <laughs> he's going to hear that. He's in the bed, but he's going to hear that. And he's going to be like, Daddy, why are you revving my truck up for? You're burning my gas. It's all right. He'll live through it. All right, so we got to get this thing turned around, get it back in the barn. Oh, and what do you know? There we go. We got some Shell Rotella T6 15W40. I decided to go with the uh, full synthetic um, Rotella motor oil this time. I, I've been running uh, Rotella T4 uh, for about the past oh, uh, seven years. So. Got a few miles on the thing now, and um, I decided to go to the good stuff this time. We're gonna do some. We're gonna do some Shell Rotella T6 full synthetic. Let's get this show on the road. Let's move this thing around here. I'm gonna set y'all up somewhere over here, rocking. Maneuver this motorhome around. Let's see where I can put y'all at. I think I can put you, I don't know. Let's go maybe, let's go up, maybe right here. Let's see if y'all can, let's see if you sit there. Let's see if that works. Let's see, will that work? Um, yeah, that'll work. So this is going to be kind of cool. You guys are going to get to see uh, kind of a day in the life of uh, RV ownership when you're not actually enjoying it, when you're actually, uh, when you're working on the thing. So hopefully this will be a interesting video for somebody to watch. And uh, we'll go from there. Let's get this thing turned around get back in the barn a little bit so we can jack the rear end up and uh, get up under. Because that's where the engine is in this one. It is a diesel pusher. The engine is in the rear. It's in the rear of the coach. And there's a fly on my side view mirror. Isn't that cool? Just hanging out. may be wondering how I back this thing in a barn how do I keep it straight well I have a uh, I have a concrete seam going straight down the middle of my uh, concrete floor in the barn so what I do is I pretty much line myself up with the seam and the concrete and on my passenger side right hand side I follow the the line and on the obviously on the driver's side, I just try not to hit the, the opening of the door, and then we're good. But I'm not trying to be too perfect today because I do want to. I do want to get over a little bit, so I need me some room to walk around the the motorhome when I back it in here. But I want to be in here on the concrete where I can lay on the floor. And, uh, you know, get back there where I can lay down and change the oil. And plus two, when I get up here, it puts the, kind of puts the rear end up in the, up in the air real good. The front, the front's down a little bit and the rear end's kind of up in the air. But I'm still going to jack it up a little bit to, uh, give me a little more room. Alright, actually that's too far in, so I need to pull forward, so. Do 
just like a just like a big truck guys make sure before you do anything else pull that air brake that way you don't roll these things don't have a uh, they don't have a park in the transmission you just have you have neutral reverse and drive so you want to make sure you, you to make sure you uh, set your parking brake air brakes that way you won't move There we go. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna kind of assess how high up the rear end of the motorhome is and um, kind of figure that out, how much I wanna jack it up accordingly. Um, right now, there's not really that much room. I mean, I got right much room to get up under it, but I like I like to have plenty of room to, to work on things. So um, what I'm gonna do is, since we set the parking brake, obviously your rear wheels are gonna keep the thing from rolling. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just jack it up just enough to raise the rear end, but still keep these, for safety reasons, keep these rear, these drive wheels on the ground. So let's go ahead and get this thing jacked up in the back. So we gotta crank it back up again. That's the only way the uh, hydraulic jacks and the, uh, they're kind of tied to the chassis. That's the only way they're gonna work. You gotta have it running. And actually, before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and dump, I'm gonna dump the air. And right here is your air dump. So what you wanna do is, what's that, what that's gonna do is it's gonna, it's gonna lower the suspension. It's gonna release the air from the airbags and it's gonna lower your suspension. So let's go ahead and do that now. And you'll hear the air, when you do this, you'll hear the air um, escaping from the airbags. Here we go, let's do it. So pretty much just like a uh, tractor trailer with um, air ride suspension, leveling suspension. I just dumped the air out of the airbags and we just lowered down to the ground. So now what we're gonna do is I'll turn on the uh, leveling system and all I want to do is I want to put this thing in manual because all I'm going to do is raise the rear I don't want to raise the front at all so you're going to put this thing in manual and we're going to go rear and we're just going to raise the rear, rear just enough so I can get up under it work on it but without keeping the without taking the um, the rear or the drive wheels off the ground so let's let's go ahead and do that I don't know if you guys can see it going up or not, but let's see. So right now we're going up. All right, let's see how, let's see how, let's see how that did. Like I said, I don't want to get the uh, drive tires off the ground. We just want it up enough in the back to raise it up so we can get up under. Drive tires on the ground. Max down. Let's go up some more. Let's get its rear end in the air. It feels like I'm going downhill, I'll tell you that. Rear. Keep on going. Alright, let's see what that looks like. I don't want to get those drive wheels off the ground. We're still on the ground. Let's see how this looks now. Let's see if I can get up under. Yeah. Actually, you know what? I do have I do have one side up off the ground, but I have one here still, so I'm gonna let it go right here. It ain't going nowhere with one. It's not going anywhere with one. One side still on the ground, so we're gonna let it go like that. And guys, the one thing you gotta look at too is the front. <laughs> what happens is you raise the rear end, and if you're going down a hill, you see how close the front is? That's how close the front is. So, 
you gotta watch the front too when you jack these things up in the rear if you're on a hill yep it looks like it's a low rider in the front but it's all good that's exactly what i want they shut her off and off we go all right so are you going to need to change the oil in your diesel motor home and in my case it's a uh, 6.7 liter Cummins ISB and basically the only thing you're going to need is you're going to need a large oil container you need something that's going to hold at least five gallons there's five gallons of oil that's going to come out of this engine probably need a couple of rags some paper towels and obviously an oil filter wrench you're gonna need a couple of different uh, funnels and um, I'll get into that later um, as to why you need a couple of different long uh, funnels. Um, obviously you want your oil filter and this is a Fleet Guard LF3970 for the uh, 6.7 ISP Cummins. And all you're gonna need is a half inch socket wrench. You won't need any uh, you will not need any sockets. All you need is a wrench. So let's get this thing started. <laughs> oh, by the way, don't forget to take your uh, cap off your oil container if you do. And you, <laughs> you're you going to have a mess if you forget to take that off your oil drain container. Just want to throw that out there. <laughs> okay, so... Let's go ahead and get this container under the motor home. You know what? I'm probably going to have so many haters uh -huh. to watch this video. That's okay. People are going to hate. It's all good. All right. That's going under the motor home. Hey, Roscoe. That's oil. No. Get that under there. And the only other thing I need right now is the wrench. Half inch wrench. No sockets, no nothing. Okay, so obviously we've been, we've already went for a small ride this morning on the uh, motorhome to go get it inspected. And she passed with flying colors. No problems whatsoever with the inspection. <clears throat> the inspection of, uh, at least in the state of North Carolina, the inspections on motorhomes is the cheap part. Once you get it inspected, then you get to pay uh, property tax on it. So that's the, that's the fun part. All right, so let me get down here. I'm going to try to put y'all somewhere where y'all can see what's going on. And I don't know exactly where to put this camera, but I'll figure it out here in a minute. Let's try to find a good spot for it. Let's see, where can I put y'all? Okay. I think I'm just going to put y'all over here in the other corner for right now. Let's see if y'all can what's going on here no you don't think you're gonna be able to see what's going on because can y'all see what's going on right there let's see y'all can see what's going on right there let's see i believe y'all can see what's going on right there it's close enough for government work <laughs> so Gotta make sure your drain plug is out of the bottom of this. Make sure this cap's tight. Make sure your vent is open because there's gonna be a whole bunch of hot oil coming out of the motor. And you kinda wanna get it where to start running down because you don't want it oil to go all over the place. And oh, by the way, I do put uh, cardboard on the floor and I'm moving this all around. Y'all probably just moving all around the place. Let's see if y'all can see this. Nope, I don't believe y'all can see this. This little stand here I have for my GoPro is not the best stand in the world. Let me just tell you, I hate it. But it's all I got right now. 
Okay, let's see. Yeah, that'll work. Let's see if y'all can see that. Hopefully y'all can see this. Without the extension. Perfect. Okay. Just loosen it ever so lightly. Then, let's see here. Oil is getting ready to go everywhere. It's going to be fun. Let's see if I can do this real quick. Let's see what happens. It's going to be five gallons of oil. So I do it, I get my hands. Come on, babe. There we go. Butamus. That's how you do it. Real fast. She's hot. I'm gonna go wipe my hands off with this uh, paper towel. Yeah, that's cool. I can feel the I can feel the air coming out of this container with the oil going down into the uh, drain. So that's why you need your uh, you need your vent open. If you don't, it's gonna bubble up. And you're gonna have a, you're gonna have a mess. And it's going in right now. Good job. Bring a light in here so we can put a light on the subject, make things a little easier to see. Let's see if that'll work. Yeah, that'll work. And when it's hot, when that motor's warm, you're going to get you're going to get most of the oil out of the engine. And that's a good thing. You want to get all as much of the old oil out of it as you as you can. I mean, you're obviously not gonna get all the all the old oil out, but you're gonna get enough of it out to by the time you put new fresh oil back in it, the motor's not gonna know anything different. As far as a little bit of uh, old oil being being in it. So that drained out real fast, faster than I thought. That's, um, I believe for this engine, it is 17.6 quarts of oil. It's either that or 16.7, one or the other. By the time you start putting oil in it to keep from overfilling it, basically what you wanna do is you just measure your dipstick uh, keep the oil between the um, the low level and high level, and you'll be good. And by the time I finish changing the oil, I will have topped it off right to the right to the top mark on the uh, dipstick. So let me uh, I, I want to bring I want to grab the camera and I want to show you guys some stuff over here on this side. Let me go ahead and grab it without well, making a mess here with this. Stay up there, light. I don't think you are. Yeah. Will you hang right there? Let's see if you hold right there. Yeah, I think you'll stay right there. Perfect. Okay, on a Cummins ISB, um, 6.7 on a motorhome, a Freightliner chassis. A um, couple things noteworthy underneath here. Uh, obviously, your oil pan is on the bottom. And let me use my light. I'm just kind of laying here on the back and showing you guys this. And up in there is your is your fan shroud. Um, pretty much uh, good luck with replacing the uh, serpentine belt. That's one thing I haven't had the pleasure of having to do yet. And I don't know if I really want to. Um, if anybody knows where I can find a video on YouTube or somewhere of, of the procedure to replace that serpentine belt, please let me know. I've not found one yet. And basically, when I get to ready to replace mine, I'm going to video the whole thing because I haven't been able to find a video yet on, on how to get in here and replace this serpentine belt. I'm, I'm not looking forward to, to that deal. And uh, at any rate, before I, you know what, before we go down that road, let me just show you some things uh, um, under this. Uh, under this motorhome, 
under this Freightliner chassis. So on this side right here, you have your, you've got a uh, primary and a second well. You have a primary fuel filter and you have a uh, fuel filter water separator. So the Alliance up here, um, truck fuel filter water separator is in the front. And then the rear is your uh, primary uh, fuel filter. And I replaced both those last year. And I didn't put probably, last year I probably put uh, two or 3,000 miles on the motor home. That's it, if that. So I'm, I'm not replacing this year. They're, they're good to go. There, there's no sense in just wasting money on filters just to be replacing filters. So I'm, I'm not replacing those. They're good. There's no water in the fuel um, at any rate. It's a good idea to keep keep one handy in case you are on a trip and you uh, are if you think you're something's wrong with your motor if it's not running right you won't crank or it, it's not running right sometimes you can have a clogged fuel filter cause a bad fuel so if you do travel a lot it's always wise to carry a couple of fuel filters with you um, so you don't have to have that dreaded um, tow into a uh, repair shop to only have the uh, tech tell you it was a fuel filter so anyway fuel filters water fuel separator um, over here on the passenger side of the engine you have your allison transmission uh transmission filter um i'm not touching i'm not going to be touching this allison transmission for a long long time this uh, motorhome only has twenty thousand miles on it and there's no need whatsoever to do anything with that transmission <clears throat> Till at least a hundred thousand miles. I'm not going to touch it. Um, other net over here. You have all your, <laughs> you have all your DF. Uh, you have your particulate filter. Let me get my light up here. You can't see. All your exhaust. All your particulate. That's your particulate filter. Your your DF. Your muffler down here. And that's where all your exhaust goodies are up in there. Um, you can't touch that on these motorhomes. You can't you can't delete them. You can't do anything uh, that's illegal now. The EPA's cracked down on all deletes. Okay, so over on the uh, driver side, uh, or the uh, I guess you want to call it the left side of the motorhome. Um, this is the left side of the engine underneath the bottom. Again, Allison transmission that way. Uh, your drive, your axle, your rear end facing the direction because it's a pusher that direction. This is the rear. And on this side of the motor, you have your uh, your engine starter. And let's see what else. Uh, oil filter. And it, the oil filter is right there. Uh, it's not in a very, uh, it's not in the best place in the world for maintenance, but it is uh, it is doable. So that's where your oil filter is, and that's where we're going to get up in there, and we're getting ready to take that oil filter off. And uh, let's see if I can go around this side of the chassis. So now I'm on the outside of the chassis, over here, and right there is the turbo, and right there is your air filter going straight into the turbo inlet. And in fact, I think it's going to be just as easy for me to come up on this side of the uh, chassis, and there's the oil filter right there. I'm I'm actually sitting uh, Indian style um, on the ground here, and I'm going to see if I can go ahead and get that oil filter off uh, right there. Okay, so um, <clears throat> I just put the drain plug, the oil the oil drain plug um, back in, and I want to show you guys uh, my method for tightening the the drain plug. Um, and this has worked for me for years and years and years. Let me get this camera on. You guys can see what's going on here. So <clears throat> when I tighten, when I tighten these drain plugs, I come in here and I'll go ahead. And, first of all, you put them on by hand because you don't want to strip a drain plug. That's the last thing in the world you want to do is have a, a strip that drain plug. So I'll come in here. Like I said, put a trap inch socket in there. I'll tighten it by hand and then i'll take my i'll take my fist on my half inch socket and i'll just go boop, 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 boop. that's it that's all you want to do it's tight all right so on this side i want to also show you some more things over here on this side of the motor when i'm sitting up indian style let me uh let me get up here 
you guys are probably going, why is that? Why is he up under that motorhome changing that oil himself when he can just pay someone to do it? Well, let me explain why. Um, I have, I've always done my own maintenance um, because when I do it, I know it's done to, uh, to my liking. Um, it's, it's done to the best of my abilities. And uh, I know it's done, at least in my mind, what I think is right, okay? Whether you think it's right or wrong, that's just me. Um, that's that's the way I roll. I do. All, I've always done my own maintenance. The, the the biggest reason why I do my own maintenance is because you can save so much money. And uh, yeah, I'm getting older. Um, I ain't gonna lie to you about it. It's um every year it comes around. I do maintenance on this motorhome. You know, I kind of start to wondering to myself. You know, why don't I just stop doing that stuff myself and you know have someone else do it? Well, it, it's just. It doesn't make any sense for me why if I'm if I'm able to do it and uh, <laughs> why would I pay somebody else to do it who I don't who I may or may not trust probably probably not trust um, anyway I just wanted to go ahead and get that off my shoulders um, where you know but anyway <laughs> sometimes I sound like I'm rambling but you know I do um, at any rate. Uh, what else is over here? Um, on this side of the motor, you have your alternator. And again, the oil filter's in there behind all that crap. And then you have the wonderful AC, your dash AC compressor is right there. And um, a couple of years ago, this, uh, well, not this one, the original dash AC compressor uh, exploded driving down the interstate. <clears throat> and when it exploded, it, a pl a, like a plume of, what looked to me like white smoke came flying out of the back of the motorhome and I, I thought i thought we were done I, I thought the thing was going to overheat and i thought i was losing coolant and it was steaming and all kinds of stuff but basically what happened was the side of the air, the side of the compressor um exploded and when that happened all of the refrigerant basically just boom it came out the back of the motorhome and, and actually when you're going down the road doing 65 miles an hour it's all going to come out of your radiator because that's where it's, that's where all the air is being sucked right so it went straight out of the radiator and it looked like a cloud of white smoke behind me and i thought for sure we were done and you know i found out that it was just a dash ac compressor that exploded on us and thankfully that's all it was and uh we were able to continue on i ended up going uh we're in north carolina i went down to uh Gaffney, South Carolina to the uh, Freightliner uh, chassis uh, service center down there and they uh, they actually replaced the uh, dash AC compressor under warranty for me. Um, I, I Yeah, I've still had issues with the air conditioner ever since um, because basically what happened was when the original compressor exploded, it, uh, it left shrapnel um, all in the uh, refrigerant lines, the dash AC lines. So um, he even told me, he said, look, he said, there's no guarantee you're going to get all the um, shrapnel, everything, you know, that could be in the lines. And he said, but he did replace the dryer, which is in the front. And, you know, he said, you know, basically good luck. And yeah, that that's, that's all he could do. So... <laughs> So I, I have had issues with the air conditioner uh, for the past uh, three or four years, and I've recharged it myself. Um, I've fixed it myself, and I have literally figured out that trash will get stuck somehow or another in the dryer up front. And I probably should go and replace the dryer again, but I can actually tap the top of the dryer with a uh, with a you know a small hammer or a small screwdriver or something, and my compressor and my front condenser fan will actually turn back on and start working so you <laughs> that's hey that's rving for you that's rving but anyway let's go ahead and get this uh let's get this oil filter off here all right guys i was able to get my camera uh right there to show you what i will be doing to get this uh oil filter off of this engine so uh actually while i'm in the process can you see my hand over here no i think so I'm gonna check my serpentine belt. It ain't got no cracks in it, so I'm I'm good with that. Um, let's get this light up here. Uh, y'all need some light, don't you? Let's see if I can get this light in a good place where y'all can see what's going on. 
Yeah, if I get it right there, that'd be great. Uh, nope. There's not many places to hang a light. Let's see if I can. Man, I wish I had somewhere to put my light. I don't. Dang it. Dag nab it. <clears throat> up here. That's enough light. No, maybe not. I gotta have better light than that. Let's see. Let's find the light right. I think it'll be right there. Hello. I am trying to show my peeps how to change oil on a 6.7 liter Cummins ISB in a diesel pusher. All right, so what we want to do is I want to bring over my oil pan because we're definitely going to lose some oil out of this oil filter. I'm going to try not to lose any oil, but we'll see what happens. All right, so I'm actually going to take, make sure I got my oil filter wrench in the right place. And I'm actually going to go over top here. It's going to be easier because there's hoses and things in the way. I got to get closer. around there like that yeah, let's see nope oh, why is it oil filters have to be in such a tight spot yep always are there we go all right so all i gotta do is get this thing cinched down let's oil filter and let's go uh let's see here we don't want to tighten <laughs> Okay, we're going to loosen. Let's see. Lefty loosey, righty tidy. Just like that. It was that easy. Okay. Y'all still with me? Yep, so now I'm going underneath with my hand right here. And we're going to see if we can do this without spilling any oil out of it. I think I can do it. Let's see if we can do this without spilling any oil. I think I can do it. Let's see if I can do it. Oh, yeah. Butamus. Butamus, butamus, butamus. We're going to bring it all the way down. All the way down to the bottom, just like that. And we're gonna pour the oil out of the oil filter. And guys, there was a, there was a lot of dirt around that. Not in the oil, but around the where it mounts up to the, uh, I don't know if y'all can see that, but there's dirt. There's a lot of dirt. So, so the one thing about these diesel pushers, these motors get extremely dirty because they're where they're 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 behind your 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 drive wheels they're in the back of the motorhome that's where all, all the dirt road grime everything gets kicked up on this motor and so when i get done when we get done changing oil in this thing i'm gonna show i'm gonna show y'all how i wash and clean this motor um that's probably something you guys will have never seen anywhere else on youtube either uh, cause I think I'm the only one crazy, crazy enough to, to do it. But, uh, what I want to show y'all is if y'all look right around here, that's dirt. It's nothing but dirt. So you, we need to clean that up and make sure that dirt does not get anywhere close to the inlet for the oil passages right there. <laughs> so we're going to, you know what? I'm not even going to take a paper towel. I'm going to just take my finger. I'm gonna see if I'm, I'm coming up underneath in the middle of the frame. I'm gonna take my finger and I'm gonna just knock that dirt away from that. And then I'll come back in here and I'll, I'll take my rag and it's hot. Whew. She's warm, okay. I got that dirt out of there. Now let's take a, I'm gonna take a clean paper towel. I'm gonna come up in here and I'm gonna clean all the way around that, that uh, oil filter seat. Let's go ahead and clean it real good. Get it all cleaned up. All the way around. 
Because dirt is a bad, dirt is a bad, 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 bad thing for an engine. You don't want no dirt in it at all. I mean, it's obviously going to, it's going to hit the fuel filter before it goes anywhere in the rest of the engine with it running right here, but I don't want to take the chance. So we're just going to clean it real good. Okay, now. Good and clean. All right, now. What we're gonna do is, I'm gonna go get some fresh oil and uh, we're gonna lubricate the, uh, the oil filter uh, gasket, if you will, uh, before we stick it up there. I'll be back in a minute, hang on. All right, so what I'm doing right now is I'm taking off, I'm getting the new oil filter right here ready. It's, it's shrink wrap, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this uh, shrink wrap off of here. And I'm going to lubricate the uh, gasket with uh, some fresh oil. You never wanna put a oil filter uh, back on the housing without first lubricating the, uh, the gasket. Um, it helps to, it helps to seat the uh, oil filter back back on the mount and uh it just it, it makes it it makes it work a whole lot better you won't have any oil leaks or anything if you just get that you get that gasket that seal right there you want to take that you want to get that seal right there good and lubricated with fresh oil so you just take something on your finger just like that and you know go right here and just lubricate the entire uh, gasket. <clears throat> All right, and then we're ready to put the oil filter back on. The new oil filter, that is. I'm actually trying to get some of the extra oil out of it right there. Okay, now, we're gonna come right back up through here again, just like we did, and I'm gonna try to keep from hitting anything because I don't want no dirt to fall. No dirt, I don't want no dirt to fall down this oil filter. I'm gonna kind of turn a little bit and keep my hand over it. There we go. Got it. Go straight up. Make sure you don't cross any threads. And we're just going to spin it back on nice and easy. And I'm going to make sure those threads are not in any way stripped. You want to make sure it turns freely, just like that. You want it to spin freely all the way. Matter of fact, sometimes I'll come off again like that and I'll spin it backwards. And I'll just spin it on. Now, <clears throat> people tell you to hand tighten an oil filter. Well, I do if it was, if it was a car oil filter. But on, on this, I hand tighten as tight as I can, like that, and then I'll put my oil filter wrench back on it, and I'll give it about one quarter turn, so I know it will not leak. Let's get this, let's get this wrench back on here. And we're gonna give it a little turn. Two, uh, a little more than a quarter turn because she's she it's awful loose. As a matter of fact, I think the uh, I could on the other one. I don't know if they put these in the same spot or not, but they probably do. If that's if that F three thirty nine seventy is right there, where I can see it. I know it's good. All right, about all right there, perfect. And that's all you want to do. You don't want to over tighten it at all. Okay, and I'm even such a stickler. <laughs> I have to, I can't stand it. I have to wipe off where I got it. I'm just anal about that. Where I touched it, I want it clean. So don't like a new oil filter. I mean, it is a new oil filter, but I just, I, that's the way I am. I have to have it clean. Even though no one will ever see it, I won't see it unless I get up under here and look at it myself but we're getting ready to wash the motor anyway. So it really 
doesn't make much difference. So let me go ahead and wipe this thing off. And as far as that goes, um, we're done down here. We are, we are done, done, done. It's time to go up top and put some oil in this engine. Okay, so here's my uh, Chevrolet LT6 uh, 15W40, uh, full synthetic uh, diesel motor oil. Um, again, like I said, since I have uh, two and a half gallon jugs, I'm gonna pour these into a uh, one gallon uh, Chevrolet uh, T4 jug. There's there's nothing in here, but that'll make it a whole lot easier to um, pour the oil over there into the uh, oil fill. So we'll go ahead and get that started. Okay, <clears throat> so right now we're at about um, three and a half quarts of oil. We're going to go ahead and check it. We're going to check the oil now, and we just want to make sure we uh, we don't want to overfill this engine with oil. Let's go ahead and get it checked. So um, I don't think I mentioned how much it cost me to um, change the oil myself. Um, so five gallons, basically two, two and a half gallon jugs of uh, Rotella T6 from Walmart was, I got them today for 40, $42 for, 42 bucks for um, two and a half gallons. So, um, to, no, I'm sorry, no, no, uh, 50, $54. So it was a hundred and um, a little over a hundred bucks for five gallons of um, Rotella T6 at Walmart. And uh, I bought the uh, Fleet uh, Fleet Guard uh, oil filter on Amazon for, I believe that was about 20 bucks, I think. So all in all, this oil change will cost me 120 bucks. Um, I don't think you're going to get your oil changed uh, on a motorhome at a truck place or a motorhome place or a motorhome dealership or an RV dealership for that. Uh, for that, so that's where you can save money on your maintenance, guys. Um, do it yourself. Um, you can uh, save a whole bunch of money by doing your own maintenance and uh, knowing it's uh, at least halfway done right. You know. So, <laughs> So, kind of makes me feel good about it. Let's see where we're at now. I don't even think. So, right now, we are we are jacked up a bit in the rear. And uh, probably what we need to go ahead and do is go ahead and crank this bad boy up. It is, you know, no, I'm going to just put a little more oil in it. It's not quite at the full line because I want to make sure, um, I just want to make sure whenever we get it, uh, before I get it leveled out, and because I know what's going to happen is oil is going to uh, fill the uh, oil filter from once we start it up. I just want to make sure we got um, a plenty. I'm, I'm sure we got a plenty of oil with three and a half gallons of oil in it, but uh, we're just going to make sure we got it before we start it. So let's go ahead and get this last little bit of drop of oil in here. <clears throat> a little bit more. You really gotta hold this funnel up so you don't spill any oil. I spilled a little bit while ago, trying to be a little overzealous and pouring it real fast, so. But hey, it happens. It's all good. I'm gonna stop right there. You, you don't wanna overfill it at all, so. Let's give it a second to run down. And uh, we'll uh, we'll check it again here in a minute, and then we'll uh, I'll move the ladder back, move the camera back, and um, I'll give you guys a uh, I'll give you guys a warm, well, somewhat warm startup of a uh, Cummins ISP 6.7 diesel engine from the rear. So uh, let's check this oil. <clears throat> Stick all the way down in there. Try it again. The longest dipstick in the world. <laughs> Make sure it's all the way in there. 
right? Let's see what we got now. I think we're going to be right on the top mark. Yeah, we're, we're just a wee bit of a fool, so I think uh, when we level it off, crank it up, level it off, we're going to be good. So let's go ahead and um, go ahead and put that back in there. That's fine. It's not going nowhere. Let me get this. Move everything out of the way, and I'll back it up and give you all a uh, warm start of a Cummings. Because <clears throat> when I lower this thing down, I've got the top open. This top right here is open. It'll, uh, I don't want to hit anything. How about right about there? That'll be good. Sweet. All right, let's go start this thing up. I think everything's good. I'm gonna leave that right there. That funnel's not going anywhere. At least I hope it don't. If it does, we got bigger problems than just changing oil, right? <laughs> if you if you had blow by, I could imagine that funnel just fly right out of there. But uh, we don't want none of that. So let's crank her up. All right, so now we're right at the bottom full line on the dipstick. Let's go ahead and top it off. Much easier now that I got this thing back down on the uh, suspension. Much easier to reach it. I'm gonna let that oil run down and then we're gonna check it we're gonna check again here in a minute just a little bit more but let's see here if I can get this in the camera right there perfection all right that's about all she wrote for the uh, for the for the big engine in the back next we're gonna move on to the generator that might be a little more interesting. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> 